Hey guys, good morning. Uh, so today I'm working on battery cables for the P48, uh, which is our 1948 Chevy 3100 uh, truck project here that I'm working on. Doing the EFI swap. Uh, I've got the motor mounted up in here and now it's time to do all the wiring. So yesterday's video was uh, me building the engine harness from the ECM uh, going through the firewall to all the sensors and looming that up and uh, making that look pretty. So today uh, I've got to handle battery cables. So I've got to get power to the starter uh, and to the engine block for ground. Um, and then I'm going to run from the starter up to the alternator for the charging circuit. So um, right now I'm just dealing with the main two main battery leads. I'm using a two gauge fine strand welding cable. So this is comprised of many many fine copper flexible uh, wires as opposed to the big heavy uh, battery cable gauge uh, copper gauge wires that that they sell at your auto parts stores and whatnot. Uh, those work mostly okay. Um, they're they're comprised of fewer, larger gauge copper strands, whereas these have uh, the, this welding cable has many fine strand copper wires. And the difference is that electricity travels on the surface of the wire. So the more wire that you have, the more amperage uh, you can carry. So the better better your connections are, the better your flow is. So if I had you know four large gauge wires then there's only four paths for the power to travel down whereas if I have I don't know several hundred smaller wires uh, there's several hundred paths for the amperage to travel on. So it's uh, I, I like using this stuff. Uh, it's heavy, it's flexible, you can tie it in a knot you know, uh, it's a good quality wire, and um, I think it's just better in general uh, for high amperage sources, like uh, like for powering a, a starter from the battery and in your alternator. So I'll be using a two gauge cable. I've got it marked out. Um, I'm using copper lugs. I'm going to solder these lugs on to uh, the welding cable, and. 5 16 hardware for the battery terminals to connect. Um, my plan right now is to just connect on the starter side and the ground to the uh, motor mount on the passenger side of, of the P48. Run these cables in some convoluted tubing, which I really hate this stuff, but it serves a purpose. So I'll be running both my cables through the convoluted tubing and uh, loom taping all of that in place and then running it through the frame rail. The, the convoluted tubing is going to provide abrasion resistance and a little bit of heat barrier uh, from radiant heat coming off the exhaust. Um, it's not going to be in close proximity to the exhaust so it shouldn't uh, it shouldn't melt um, but it'll provide a little bit of a radiant barrier so it doesn't break down our uh, insulation on our battery cables. So that's the plan. I'm going to cut. Uh, I'm going to cut the ends of my cables with the angle grinder because it's just easier. If you try to snip this with some snips, all you end up doing is pinching it, um, and it it doesn't cut cleanly. Uh, if you use like a bolt cutter or something, you still pinch the end of it, and you can't. Th then you have a bunch of uh, crimped copper wires on the end of your cut point where you cut it, and you can't get that into your over your terminal cleanly so or into your terminal cleanly so I cut it with an angle grinder leaves me a nice straight 90 degree end uh, from the insulation in the cable I don't have any fraying I don't have any pinching uh, just a nice clean cut and uh, from there I'll measure back about three-eighths of an inch and uh, cut the insulation with a razor uh, razor blade uh, trim the insulation back and then I'm ready to solder. So that's where I'm going with this. Uh, I'll set you guys up so you can watch uh, watch me cut and and prep and uh, start soldering here shortly. Okay, guys. So now that I got my cables cut to length with the angle grinder and I've got a nice 
square straight end on uh, my cuts. I'm going to be using uh, silver solder, uh, not rosin core, silver solder, and a map gas torch. And uh, I'm going to use that to heat my uh, copper lugs. So I'm going to clamp the lug in my vise. I'm going to heat the end of the lug until I get it to flash off like copper does when it when it gets shiny that means you've got it hot enough to take solder I'm gonna fill it up about halfway three quarters of the way full of silver solder and then I'm going to put my stripped wire uh, stripped end of my battery cable into the lug and hold it there and let the the copper cable in the in the welding cable heat up and absorb that solder and once I see the solder wick up then I know I can take the heat off of it. <clears throat> That's how I've always done them and uh, I'm going to keep doing it until it doesn't work. <laughs> The welding cable that I'm using is a Tempco EasyFlex welding cable. Uh, probably not the highest grade welding cable out there, but pretty good stuff. Um, EasyFlex welding cable, it's rated for 600 volt, um, minus 50 degrees Celsius to 105 degrees Celsius is the temperature range. And I think probably one of the most important things about this stuff is made in the USA. Okay guys, so I got my uh, battery cable loom made up here and I covered it in some of my favorite material, this uh, convoluted tubing. Uh, I taped it every uh, 10 inches or so just to hold this crap together so when it disintegrates it doesn't uh, just fall apart everywhere. These, these go on the starter and the ground point for the block and these are the two battery ends. I think they came out okay. That one could have been a little prettier, but it's not going anywhere. So I'm going to run these through the frame and uh, connect up this starter connection and the, the engine block connection. I could have grounded the battery to the frame directly and then grounded the block to the frame further forward. That would have saved me a couple feet of cable, but uh, I've always found that it's usually better to have fewer connections and to have the same gauge ground as your power lead so since I gotta run a power lead anyway I might as well run a ground directly to the block and then I will use a braided ground strap from the ground connection on the battery the negative terminal to the frame at the battery and I'm also going to run a braided strap from the body to the engine block so that way I have a complete uh, grounding system So there is the spaghetti monster. I've got our engine switches, oil temp switch, or I mean uh, oil pressure switch, water temp switch. Um, I've got the start signal for the uh, solenoid on the starter. I've got the AC clutch uh, actuator from the dash controls. I've got the coil 12 volt. Uh, here I've got the front harness for the front headlights, turn signals horn, um, the front electric fan, the running lights, high beams. Uh, I've got the rear here which is running lights, left and right turn signal, brake lights. Um, this is our high and low beam switch. So this switch mounts on the inside the engine compartment, on the back side of the firewall, pokes through the firewall, and this is what switches from the green wire which is your low beam to your blue wire which is your high beam. I've got our ignition switch which will plug in here. Uh, horn relay. 
these are this is for our turn signal switch and hazard switch which is one combined unit on this truck uh, it's an aftermarket piece and uh, these are all the wires that go out to the signals um, from the turn signal switch I've got our light switch here and our light switch harness here so power in running lights front and rear um, and our low beam power wire to our high low switch I've got our dash indicator lights and tack oil pressure water temp idiot lights tack signal and our high beam indicator which I've got to extend out and then these are all of our dash switches um, that would be in addition to what I've already uh, pointed out so it's our AC clutch switch our horn switch uh, radiator fan switch AC heat power to the AC and heater controls uh, power to the fan switch um, wiper switch um, radio power etc and then our battery power to our fuse block which will go all the way across to my power distribution block so as you can see things are well laid out ready to go this is going to mount up under the driver's side dash these are going to exit they're going to run straight down and exit out the firewall uh, the relay is going to mount on the inside kick panel along with uh, my other relay block which will be for other things and then these wires are going to run out towards the passenger side of the dash so once this is all mounted to the uh, firewall these will exit out and go up inside the dash where they need to go see that wasn't so hard right and up here on the passenger side in the back uh, of the firewall it's probably really impossible to see that but I've got our power distribution block which uh, battery power goes to that distribution block it's got five ports on it uh, that you can then connect a ring terminal to and tap in power wherever you need battery power so that's how I'm going to get power to my relay block and power to my uh, individual relays like the fuel pump relay, the ECM relay, uh, etc. Those are going to have their own individual relays, but I can tap all of my power off of that one distribution block and I only have to one, run one 4 gauge wire down um, to the battery and uh, keeps it clean, keeps, keeps it simple. You don't have to run two, three, four wires everywhere for every different uh, relay, just one. So uh, we're in good shape. I'm going to get this mounted up in the morning. As usual, it took longer than I thought it was going to. Um, so I'm going to get it mounted up in the morning and uh, start plugging this stuff in. So now I'm getting excited about this. Things are, things are going well. So that's it for today, guys. Uh, please, uh, if you like the video, click like and subscribe. And uh, tomorrow we'll turn out another one. Thanks for watching.